Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we've just arrived on site but before we set the van up I really want to share with you guys my 10 biggest regrets with regards to this van build. Now if you stay tuned till the end there will definitely be a few here that you've not heard covered on any other channel but before we do jump in don't forget to like and subscribe for more van conversion content. Coming in at number 10 um, I'm going to solve the argument of where do you put the waste. I've put mine in a 25 litre jerry can directly under the sink here and it's, it is a real pain in the ass. Not only does it impede your storage space, it's a pain to get it out, remember, check the levels and all that. So if you've got the tools, ability and know-how, put an underslung waste under the van with a level meter in it so you can check the level inside. Um, that will give you your space back and it will also give you just a better indication of where your waste's at at all times. Right. At number nine, we found a slight issue with only putting USB sockets at the back of the van. That's where we sleep. If our camera lady can turn around now, we've got a USB socket there and there, and then up here, our switchboard with USB sockets too. The only USB-C socket that we have in the van is here. And I'm gonna to be totally honest with you, I mucked up, I should have put more USB-Cs in. The future is USB-Cs, and I advise you put more USB-Cs than you think you need in your van. Coming in at number eight, is the water storage tank. Now I've only managed to fit a 60 litre cold water storage tank in here. It sits on top of the hot water storage. That's a separate thing. Um, going forward on the next build, I'm definitely gonna put a 100 litre underslung because you can never have enough water. Seven, ventilation at the back of the van. Going forward, what I'm gonna do is put some porthole style windows in the cubby hole foot head bits or some windows in the back of the van. Uh, I advise you do as well and the reason for this is at night there is no through draft at the back and it can get quite warm. Coming in at number six is the interior decoration of the van itself. So when I was doing the build uh, myself and Zara were having a little bit of a chat about whether we should or shouldn't paint it. Before we painted it it looked like this and painted it looks like this. I am a big fan of the wood look. It felt like a cabin it was just, it just felt homely and nice. And uh, going forward, I think I'm gonna try and build a van all in nice natural wood and um, not paint it. I think the paint ruins it personally, but that's just a personal opinion. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, the last few that are coming up will be more exciting than these. But number five is, I wish I had an emergency toilet in the van. We've not been caught out a few times, but it would be a lot more comfortable. So I think I'd maybe incorporate something in here that I could pull out or something I could pull out from under the bed or even just something in the back. But my advice for you guys, if you're building your own van, is certainly to think about incorporating a toilet in there, whether it be composting or um, chemicals. Number four, when we turn these chairs around, this becomes a really dark area at night. So in the next one, I'm gonna be putting spotlights up in here. Um, don't neglect the cabin area, especially if you've got a swivel base because the whole van's nice and bright at night and this area just tends to get dark and I sit here, so it's actually quite frustrating. Incorporate spotlights in the front. So at number three is the back of the bed. So let me explain that in a little bit more detail. I've built a bed that goes across the van. Uh, I'm six foot one and I can fit comfortably across with the sort of in-built niche type areas or flares, I guess they're called, but they're internal flares. The problem I didn't think of is the gap at the back of the bed. So when we shut the doors, there's like a 250 mil gap there now. And it's quite frustrating if you wanna sit with your back up against the door and watch the telly, there's just a, a huge gap. So I think going forward, what I'm gonna do is, and I may incorporate it on this one actually, cause it's something I can probably add on, is I'm gonna put like a wooden shelf across the back. So at night we can use it to put our drinks on if we're laying in the bed. And during the day, if we're sitting with our backs up against here, uh, we can just sit on that bit of wood and it's, I don't know how I'm gonna make it comfortable. I might have to lower it slightly and put a thin foam mattress on it. But yeah, um, definitely need to seal that gap up. And also a draft comes up through there as well. So for those of you who have been following our journey through Scotland and the Highlands and also through Wales, you will know the saga of the diesel heater. So coming in at number two, my, one of my biggest regrets certainly is not buying an expensive diesel heater from the get-go. We bought a Chinese one, it's 110 quid, and it went bang after about 10 days. So. My advice to you and myself going forward is invest in a good diesel heater from the very get-go. Um, it might seem like a lot of money, but I tell you what, it's definitely worth it when you're in minus 10 in the middle of a snowstorm. So we finally made it to what is, without a doubt, the biggest regret of this whole build. Um, and let me explain why. So 
my biggest regret of this whole build is buying this van. Now, what I mean by that is not a transit, is not this actual van is bad, is medium wheelbase. I wish I had bought the long wheelbase van, which effectively would come to here, but what that would allow is space inside to build a shower and toilet cubicle. So if you've got the space to store the van, please consider getting a long wheelbase van. 